Hello everyone, welcome to another ODNT Spotlight. I'm Steve DeWinter and today we have an author of heroic fantasy adventures with us named Tom Falwell and he has two books out already. Uh, the first one that came out in December of 2014 is Dragon Rising and I really like the cover on that, the flaming dragon, that's very cool. And then also we have a new one. Now we've been practicing this before the show started so let's hope I get this right. I just finish saying it. It's the first book in his Rangers of Laurian series, A Whisper in the Shadows. So those are the two books that we are going to talk about some today as well as other, but let's go ahead and switch on over. Hello, Tom. Welcome to ODNT Spotlight. Hello. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you very much for coming on the show. So let's go ahead and let's talk about your first book, The uh, Dragons. Uh, dragons Rising. What was your inspiration for writing that book, a book on dragons? That's that's a neat story because I was playing the game uh, Elder Scrolls Skyrim, Elder Scrolls Five, and I, I one of the things I am is in games. I'm an altaholic. I love creating characters, so I'm always creating new characters and never finishing the game. <laughs> I I created a character. <clears throat> Uh, that because you could get mods for that game and change things, I was able to create a character with cat-like green eyes as a, a female hunter. And as I was creating a character, it came into my mind that she could be a dragon in human form. And from that, I started thinking about the story. And actually, when I sat down and started writing the story, I had no idea where it was going to go. I just... All I had was what you see as the very beginning of the book where she's hunting with her cat, Morlock. That was all I had in my mind when I started. And the story just kind of took off. And I just it just kind of flowed out real fast. And I was amazed at, at where it went. And, and I, it, to me, it was like reading a new book myself because I didn't know where it was going. Oh, that's always fun. <laughs> I believe the technical term for that is pantsing versus uh, plotting. <laughs> yeah. So do you like to, when you write your books, do you like to outline them first, or do you really like to experience the story as if you were a reader? Actually, both. Uh, that comes from my old Dungeons & Dragons days and being a, 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 a DM, a dungeon master. I like to plan things out. But when I do that, when I also, with those adventures I'd create for, for people to play in, as we'd go through it, they'd do things that would make me think of something else. And so I would change it right on the spot. And the actual adventure turned out according to how they reacted to the things that I had originally put in there. So it never came out the way I had planned it. So <laughs> I, li I like to plan things, and, and I've always been fascinated with, building fantasy worlds like Tolkien and Howard, Robert E. Howard and Tolkien, uh, that just the way that they built those and all the details in the background, the social interactions, the religions, the just different races and how they reacted to each other and the history and all that, that always astounded me. So I wanted to do that really bad. And that's what brought about Rangers of Lawrence. Excellent, excellent. And you, you hit on a key point for, you know, the, there's a big debate all the time between authors of pantsing versus plotting, outlining or just writing into the dark, uh, Dean Wesley Smith calls it. And when you do outline, don't feel stuck to that. Yeah. And adjust. When you get a derail, that derail is going to be really cool. Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so your Dungeons and Dragon du Dungeon Master training. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, it's a good training for imagination. Too. Yes. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And um, so also we had your new book the in the uh, Rangers of Larian, A Whisper in the Shadows. How did that story come about? Because, you know, I'm sure everybody was clamoring for the second Dragon Risings book, right? Well, some were. I, I had a few wanting to know, you know, more about that, but I hadn't really thought more about that. I, I had a few little ideas, but nothing concrete. But uh, 
it, as you pointed out before we started this interview, in back in the late 80s, uh, I was involved with my brother in creating a comic book, uh, Dun uh, Dark Regions was the name of the book. Uh, it was black and white comic. We were trying to get in on the black and white boom that was going on. It seemed like, I mean, anybody was coming out with anything. They even came out with <laughs> Ninja Turtles and we got all it. kinds of stuff, you know. So we thought, hey, this is easy. This is great. Let's get in on this. So he, he was the publisher <laughs> and I was the writer, but we both sat down and created the three main characters for that story. And one of those characters was a ranger named Barrick. Ah. And ever since then, that has been, Barrick felt like that's who I always wanted to be. And so every game I ever played, I always, first thing I do is create a character named Barrick. <laughs> and then, even in Star Wars, you know, I got Barrick the Jedi Knight and then just all over. So. I, I thought I want to build a story around him, and <laughs> and so I started thinking about rangers and how all these fantasy stories they always have knights and armors, the the big heroes, or you know it, there always seemed to be somebody in armor. And I thought, why not a ranger? Just to some some leather armor being the hero. Oh, so nice! I decided to create a whole group of rangers. And one of the other characters in that A Whisper in the Shadows, Barrick is the main character, one of the supporting characters is Argon Wolf. That's actually a character I created when I was playing uh, Lord of the Rings online. Oh. It was also a ranger. So it, it's basically, it's, it's kind of became characters that I had already created and had in my mind for a long time, but I am adding some new ones in there too. So, so you, uh, you uh, test drive your characters in all these online games. I don't, know video I, games. I don't know if I actually test drive them. I just love creating them. I just, I just love creating characters and worlds. That's uh, so much fun. And then to start telling the stories. And like I said, uh, I have some ideas where it's going to go, but it always takes a turn somewhere here or there. And I get surprised just as much as the reader does. So. Excellent. And and when uh, you say you love creating characters and s worlds and stories, I notice on your website, and I'll have for all of those watching the interview here, uh, if you're watching this embedded in another website, just click on the little button down there that says view on YouTube or watch on YouTube, and then you can see the description. I'll have a link to Tom's website down there. And on that, you have a Ranger Archives link, and when I look at that, you you got the lore and history of the Rangers of Laurian, and you've already got a whole bunch of stuff up there that shows us more depth than just your story does, right? Oh yeah, and I'm I'm working on a complete timeline for the first two thousand years up to the beginning of the first book. Wow. Wow, and I also noticed and pulled off of that website here that you made a, because the place that everything takes place is here, H-I-R? Her. Her, all right, so it takes place in her, and look, there is the Lands of Her map. So who made this map? I did. You did, so once again, pulling on your old Dungeons and Dragons Dungeon Master training. Putting and together some, a map. And some good software, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and grab some good software. And so that's pretty cool. I like that. You know, because I've done some fantasy stuff, but I've never drawn maps on anything that I've done. It's just not a skill I have. <laughs> so it's yeah. good that you have that skill, especially for doing your epic fantasy. So that's pretty cool. But you can definitely, um, if you're watching this, just click on the link for Tom Falwell.com's web, his website, and then click on the Ranger Archives button along the top in the menu system, and then you can view the map of her, and you can read more about all the different lore and history of the Rangers of Laureen. Laureen. Yeah. All right, got it that time. <laughs> so, so since we come now that we focus on the fact that I keep misspelling or mispronouncing that, how do you come up with all the names in your fantasy novel? I notice you've got all sorts of stuff that we're like, well, how do we pronounce that? Yeah, yeah that's true. Well, I use a fantasy name generator online. <laughs> I, I found one that I like. It's got 
elf names and dwarf names and uh, Lovecraftian names and all kinds of different stuff. And I just kind of use it and uh, the regular human names. And I use elf names for my Varda race. And I use dwarf names for my Drowder race. Oh, excellent. Dragon, it's got dragon names. I use that. So it's got a lot of one. Now, but some stuff I just make up on the spot. I just It just sounds right, like her. H-I-R. I just... The lands of her. That just sounded right to me, so I just made it up. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. And with the pronunciation of her, is there like some big matriarch in charge of all this place? No, no, it's just, that's why it's H-I-R. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's just what what it's called. Uh, and the interesting thing is there's really that we're in the fourth era of the world of her. There were three eras before this. Uh -huh. and that in, in the Ranger archives uh, where it talks about the great disruption which happened 2,000 years ago and changed the whole world. And, there, so the, and that ended the third era and started the fourth era. But you'll find uh, an interesting thing is in book two, you're going to meet a character who lived through all of those past eras. Ooh. So it's a lot of knowledge. You don't give it all away at once, but he knows <laughs> it. So, you, you learn more about the world and the, and the history through the book as well as through the archives. Right, right. The archives are, are an extra. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And then you can probably get so many archives, you can probably compile those into the Rangers of Laurian compen compendium. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I'm working on a timeline that will outline... Uh, uh, important events that happened over the years building up to where the book begins, uh, such as the founding of the Rangers and uh, how, when humans first started appearing and all kinds of stuff like that. So. Excellent, excellent. So you had a story, short story out that you have since moved over and is going to be coming in an anthology Yes. Soon. And you said that was called A Strong Tower. Yes. Excellent. So what is this anthology that it's going into? Because it sounded like it was... There, there's a group on Facebook called Authors. A-W-E-T-H-O-R-S with a pound sign in front of that. It's like... Oh, the hashtag, hashtag authors. authors. Okay. And uh, that group, they had an event. Uh, I joined them last at the end of the year, I believe into 2014 and they had a, a an event here uh, back then called uh, get down with the authors and that's when I first got in with them and and got to meet a lot of people that are really good uh, especially I met a lot of people here in the United States and some overseas in in Great Britain and stuff and they continued as a group they changed it from get down with the authors to just authors uh, but they're they're taking an anthology, everybody involved, and there's I, I have no I I'd have to look to see, but I know there's at least two hundred or more of us. Wow! That uh, have contributed short stories to this anthology, and they they have so many, they're probably going to have to create another anthology <laughs> later to because <laughs> right. there's so many submitted. But I, this, they, this is something they want to give away free to help raise the awareness to readers that there are independent authors that are good. Right. We're, just because we don't have a big name publisher backing us doesn't mean we can't make good stories and good novels. True. And Very want, true. To bring that to light, and that's what the anthology will be for, and it will be given away free on Amazon. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And as well as uh, joining that group, uh, we were talking earlier before the show, you joined a lot of other um, author support groups, you know, author promo groups where you guys get together and help increase the awareness of each other. Yes. And mm -hmm. everything. A couple you mentioned on your website, uh, hashtag Indie Books Be Seen. Yes. And then also your uh, there's a Facebook author promo co-op. Yes. So very cool. Tell me a little bit about what it's like working with other independent authors and helping each other. It's been great. Uh, I've learned a lot. Uh, when I came out with Dragon Rising, I 
had no editor. Uh, I had done some research. That's why I went with the independent publishing instead of trying to go through an agent and everything. But but I really didn't know what I was getting into. And when <laughs> I came up with that first book, I started. Everybody started pointing out, "Hey, you mistyped this. You did this wrong." And I thought I was a good editor. I was wrong. <laughs> uh, through some help from from some of the support of the other authors and stuff, I got a lot of corrections made to that book. But I also met a guy who I realized would make a good editor and we got together and worked out the deal and so he was the editor on A Whisper in the Shadows and he'd done Excellent. a fantastic job and he's still doing a fantastic job for the next book so and the next book you've got is book two in your ranges of Laurian uh, Where Shadows Fall yes is that still the title for it because you know yes. it, could, it could be anything until it's actually published <laughs> it's Where Shadows Fall uh I haven't got a title for the third one yet. The I'm opening the series with a trilogy, basically. It's, oh, very it's nice. It's not just going to be three books, but the tri the first story covers three books. It'll be a trilogy, which I'm kind of thinking of thinking of as shadows over her. Ooh. Kind of speak because uh, shadows have, plays a big part of the three of the storyline that's going forward. Uh, Where shadows fall will be the second book. And I'm not sure what I'll call the third one, but there will be some recurring things, themes from the first book into the next one. I don't want to give away too much. Right. No spoilers. I, no spoilers. <laughs> I've got it. I've got an artist working on a nice cover. Uh, I had made both of these books covers myself by using the images I'd found online that I bought from uh, websites that were royalty free. And I basically bought the images and created the fonts and put them together myself. But I've got a, a professional artist who has his own studio and I, somebody I've known a long time. Very know? nice. And he's doing the third book, which all I can tell you is there's going to be a dragon on the cover, but I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> I'm going to get this cover reveal. So. <laughs> Very nice. So you leave that for a cover reveal time. Yes. <laughs> but that's book three. We still have book two coming out sometime. Well, that's, that's book two. I haven't... Oh, uh, book two. Oh, very nice. For book three or thought of a title for that one. Yet. I, I, I do have an idea what the story will be about, but not completely. <laughs> okay, great. And so book two in your Rangers series, Where Shadows Fall, that's coming out uh, end of this year, beginning of next I'm year? Hoping, I'm hoping to have it out by December. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure... Because I'm not going to, if it ain't ready, I'm not going to put it out there. No, uh, no, no. <laughs> but I am getting close to wrapping up the first draft, and so we've got still got to go through it and do some editing and all that. But I'm hoping to have it ready by December. I've got a, a event that I'm posting in December on Facebook, and I hope to have it ready for that. Oh, very nice. Very nice. And talking about events, um, one of the reasons we met is we're both in Virtual Fantasy Con. Yes. Which is a big event that's happening in November. Yes. On Facebook. Yes. And so you're going to be there November 4th? November 4th. November 4th on Facebook. So if you're watching this video before that time, <laughs> yeah. this video will be on YouTube, will be on forever. But if you're watching before that time, definitely go and check out Facebook for the Virtual Fantasy Con and yeah. stop yeah. in and say hi to Tom at his virtual desk table. I think that's going to be a fantastic event. I can't wait. Yeah, that, that is going to be a lot of fun. We've got a lot of authors there. Yes. And bloggers and readers and artists and illustrators. So it's a good coming together. And it enabled us to meet, which was yes. great. So you have a tagline that you use on your website and everything called Face the Fantasy. Uh, it's not original, I don't think, because somebody else has had it up before, but uh, it was original when I thought of it. So. <laughs> and it's a good one, though, because it's really nice because you write heroic fantasy adventures. Yes. And so when you say face the fantasy, you really, you're really bringing in your history of your role playing that you did and being a dungeon master, you know, basically leading everything and you make everyone face the fantasy in your stories, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, you say heroic fantasy. That's what drives me. 
that's what always drove me in all the stories I used to read, the, the Robert E. Howard Conan novels, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, uh, Elric Meldebone and, and his, uh, Elric of Meldeborn uh, stories. They all involve this, this her epic hero. And that's what grabs me as an epic hero. Not just a guy that just happened to be in the right place at the right time, but somebody that was bigger than life and above everyone else in stature and all that. So This is what he does. Yes. <laughs> you need somebody to help you? Well, look at me. I'm the hero. <laughs> but then and again, he's not the big muscle bound in the armor hero because you're doing, we were talking earlier, you're doing the Rangers where they're, you know, thinner, smaller, just leather armor. Except for Barrett. He's not thinner and smaller. Barrett uh, uh, is like six foot six, 250 pounds, woo. but with the grace of a cat. So, oh. and, and also a gentle giant, unless you make him mad. So, <laughs> so don't make Barrett mad. <laughs> he's, he's hard to take down. <laughs> Very hard to take down. So, and you, I also noticed you had some trailer, book trailers on YouTube. Yes. For your book series. And so I will go ahead and put the link down in the description as well. So uh, everyone watching this, as soon as the interview is done, go ahead and click on the links down below and check out his, he has an author trailer that tells more about Tom and yeah. then as well as book trailers for yes. his book series, which are really cool. I like them. Yeah, I... I found, uh, what was it, that Cyber, I can't remember the title of it, no, some software, Cyber 5 Studios or something like oh, that. Oh, right. For, what, from Sony or? Uh, no, I can't remember. <laughs> I'd have to go look. I don't remember. It was the one of those really easy video editing stuff to use. Cyber or something. Or anyway, but uh, I bought that software and, and just started using it to make my videos, getting the images, finding the music. Uh, found uh, some websites where I can get music clips and video clips and and stuff all royalty free and they're not they don't cost an arm and a leg necessarily yeah it's important important as you're just building out because as you found out with your uh, comic book series back in 1987 things get expensive really fast yeah uh, yeah real fast especially if you're grasping for too too high of a star and <laughs> like we <whatever. laughs> All right, and then also um, I noticed in in your story one of the they had to go to an active volcano and you named it Mount Scorch. Yep. What a great name because it, it just invokes don't go there you're gonna get burned. Yeah, and they not only went to it they went under it. <laughs> oh. There there if. Uh, if you read the book, their journey is to go under the volcano. Oh, wow. Into the deepest parts of it. So. Oh, boy. It must get hot there. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the volcano. Absolutely. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. All right. So uh, we've touched on all the stuff we talked about earlier. Is there anything else new that you would like uh, people watching the video here to know about the great epic heroic fantasy adventure author Tom Falwell oh gosh <laughs> I'm not one to talk about myself like that so I don't know uh, I just thank God that he gave me a bit of a talent and uh, that I have the opportunity to use it and to meet people from all over the world uh, being a programmer I was pretty introverted and now becoming an author, I'm having to find out what it's like to be extroverted. It's, <laughs> it's a whole other change. Yeah, it's a whole new world. And just meeting some wonderful people from all over the place, from Canada, from the United Kingdom. Uh, uh, some of them are over in the Middle East, I think. And just, uh, just meeting all these people. And we all have ideas for stories and stuff. And, some of them are in different genres that I don't care about, but they, I, I still respect all of them as authors, and I know they respect me, so it's just been an awesome ride. Excellent, excellent. Well, hey, thank you very much, Tom, for coming on the ODNT Spotlight and having the spotlight shined on you. 
So go ahead and uh, hang out here. Don't disconnect just yet. I'm going to go ahead and close down the interview, and then I'll come back to you and we'll chat for a few more minutes. All, All right. right. So thank you very much, Steve. Hey, thank you very much, Tom, for coming on ODNT Spotlight. I'll be right back for you. All right. So again, that was a uh, wonderful heroic fantasy adventure author Tom Falwell. And we talked a lot about A Whisper in the Shadows, which is book one in his Rangers of Laurien. And hopefully I said that right. I'm sure he can see, he'd still hear me. And so, but definitely check out his website and click on the Ranger Archives link at the top of his website to look at his lore and history of the Rangers. And he's going to be building up a wonderful, awesome world. And boy, in the first book, having to travel under a volcano. That sounds really cool. I'm going to definitely have to check these out. So once again, my name is Steve DeWinter for ODNT Spotlight. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We have many more interviews with other authors, artists, actors, musicians. Anybody who will come on my show, I'll have them on my show. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.